What's up, YouTube? Welcome to the Hot Sauce. This is Angel Planells, a registered dietitian nutritionist in Seattle, Washington. I just cracked 100 subscribers, and the goal is to make it to 250. So do me a solid and like, comment, and subscribe, and let's get right into it. Today, we are going to feature Angela Lamond, a registered dietitian nutritionist that resides in Dallas, Texas. All right. Well, today we have with us Angela Lamont. Um, thank you for joining us today. We're so glad to have you. It's uh, been a pleasure. I haven't seen you in forever. So it's I great know. to see you in person. <laughs> I miss our days together in the sports yes. person program, Angel. Yes, yes, yes. So I guess to, to get us started, can you tell us about your journey into the profession? Let's talk about uh, where you went to college, your internship, and what you've done so far in the career. Uh, absolutely. Well, I'm honored to be here to talk about dietitians who I think are amazing people in the healthcare industry. I believe that everybody should have their own dietitian they check in with at least once a year. That's my uh, vision for our profession. Uh, I am um, an RDN, but I am a second career dietitian. So I started out in corporate marketing, had, of course, an um, you know, epiphany when it came to health and wellness in my own life. And I ended up really being interested in nutrition. So after I got married at 29 years old, um, it was about 30, 31 that I actually quit my job in marketing and went back to school full time. So um, I live in the Dallas area. Um, actually, if anybody knows the Dallas area, I'm in Allen, Texas, and um, just went back to school full time, did the sciences that really intimidated me, but I ended up nerding out and loving it. Uh, organic chemistry was my favorite topic. Everybody's going to be like, whoa, no. You either love it or hate it, but I loved it. I, I loved, loved it. Um, biochemistry and all that nerdy stuff. I got my degree at UT Southwestern um, Medical Center here, and well, that's actually in Dallas, and it's a coordinated program. So I love the idea that they could coordinate all my internship, and I just had to show up. And they even had this, um, you know, selected experience, so I could kind of do some of the things that. I was looking into. So I can't say enough about the UT Southwestern Clinical Nutrition Program. Uh, we get a lot of interns there now. Um, and so, yeah, that was 2004. So I've been a dietitian since then. Awesome, awesome. So I think one of the things that a lot of people know you for is for your company, you know. Can you kind of tell us about the journey, what it looked like when you left your you know, when you, when you left the, uh, or I guess you're, you were a pediatric dietitian and then you ended up starting your own thing. Like just kind of talk yeah. about the evolution where you, yeah. where it started, where it is now. Yeah. It's interesting how the, you know, your personal life and your professional life can collide because after I uh, became a dietitian, I also was a new mom. I literally graduated the same year that my first, our first child was born, Hannah, who is now 18. So you know how long I've been in the industry by how old Hannah is. Um, but I, I started working as a Monday, Friday cover at Children's Medical Center, which is the big um, clinical facility for pediatrics here in Dallas. And I learned every area of practice in the, in the hospital because I was covering the people that had to work the weekend. So it gave me a really good opportunity to get the you know, the breadth of knowledge across all disease states and, and clinical pediatrics. So it was really amazing. But at the same time, I had an infant and I was, you know, trying to navigate all of that. And um, what I started noticing um, when I would cover in like nutrition clinic, I would notice that the way the nutrition clinic and the hospitals are set up is you get, you know, maybe 15, 20 minutes with the dietitian, say like, you know, the parents are bringing kids in. Um, and it just really wasn't enough time. And I just saw a big gap in our big city, the Dallas Fort Worth area at the time, there was no place that you can actually go to and really have good, engaging, practical conversations with a pediatric specialist, which, you know, food and eating is such a big topic. And I knew that as a new mom, like I couldn't imagine only having 15 minutes with a dietitian 
if, you know, my child is like failure to thrive or having a lot of digestive issues and I don't know how to feed them. Um, so that kind of continued to build in my heart. And um, at the same time, you know, I had my second child, Evan, he was born in 2007. And I was living in far North Dallas. And so I was getting also like stretched as far as my work life balance. So um, it all kind of collided where I said, you know what, we're gonna try to go out and do some private practice, I can have some more time with the family. Um, and see how that goes. I kind of laugh now because, you know, I thought I was going to have a little more balance, but um, anybody that's in private practice or running their own business that, you know, it is not a clock in and clock out situation. It's like 24 seven. So, but it did allow me to fulfill my desire to serve the community in the way I feel felt led as a woman of faith to um, help um, put forward my purpose my professional purpose, which was walking along, alongside families, empowering them in the space of food, nutrition, and feeding children and raising them. So that kind of was what was born out of that in 2009 when we started Lamont Nutrition. It was just me. Um, and then 2012 is when really for Texas specifically, the insurance ability to bill insurance and actually get paid for the services um, started um, in the state of Texas or at least really revved up and you know you could actually become an insurance provider and um, we really grew exponentially that way it, um, you know then hiring my first office manager and continuing to network in the community um, doctors like to talk to other doctors and say hey this company is great send your 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 patients to and you know word of mouth continued and serving um, volunteering our time is uh, was a big thing of you know genuinely wanting to help the community I always tell people I know obviously everybody wants to make a living um, and make money but for me mine was a lot more existential kind of like really wanting to contribute something to the community and at the same time be able to be home with my kids. I don't think it's either or. And that's kind of what I've maintained over the years is you don't have to choose either or. You just need to be smart about where you decide to spend your time. And um, it's worked for us. And we've grown now. We have um, 16 dietitians. Wow. We, um, yeah, 16 dietitians. We have a full administrative staff. Um, we're operating across 20 states. Um, we just opened uh, a new location. We moved one location to another, South Lake. We're in Plano, Texas, if you're familiar with the Dallas area. And our second location, a new location is South Lake, um, which is a really nice area um, closer to the Fort Worth side that we just opened recently that we expect to be very busy. So um, we're really excited about the um, future of where nutrition is going in this area and how to serve the community more. That is awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> it's great to hear. It's, it's very inspirational. So that's, yeah. that's great to hear. Great. Um, so next question for you. So as a, you know, fellow media spokesperson who still gets involved from time to time, what do you find has been the most enlightening experience or, um, or also what about the most humbling aspect of of being in the media, what would you have to say? Well, um, it's time consuming. Um, that's humbling. And then also, I don't know, I, I, you know, I was a spokesperson for nine years with the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. And before that I was in, um, I came up through like the Dallas Association and the Texas Academy. Um, and so I had, had many, many years. And I still, to this day, don't like to watch myself on playback. So, <laughs> um, so that is the humbling part, but it's necessary. I tell people that want to be in media, you have to like put your ego aside. You have to, in order to think of what you want to deliver to your, to your audience, you have to put your ego aside and say, yeah, I don't like how my little nuancey things with my face or whatever, but how am I communicating the message? And that once you get past yourself, that is, um, that's where you can 
do well and really focusing on the message instead of yourself. It's kind of the same thing as like public speaking, right? Um, how am I feeling? How am I being perceived? Um, that kind of just becomes overwhelming. You have to get over yourself and say, nobody cares about you. They want to know what you have to say. Yes. Uh, and the faster that you can get to that place, um, you can be, you know, that's where you can be effective. I almost feel like sometimes the, um, the act of getting butterflies is a little like, you know, everyone gets them. And then, you know, I think you need to try to harness it for good and try to be like, okay, yeah. let's, let's, let's use it for good energy instead of negative and, and just let's put out a good product. So, so that's what it's about. Okay. Well, thank you for that answer. Uh, next question. So if you could do it all over again, what would you change in your career? Or what would you keep saying? Well, I, it's hard to answer that because I definitely believe that even the difficulties along the way have taught me so many valuable lessons. So overall, I would say probably not, um, any different there is a little piece of me that say like um you know my husband and i jeff is my co-owner uh, my husband now and he made the move to come over to work for lamont nutrition full-time in this last year which has been quite a transition <laughs> i mean you know i have always loved my husband we just celebrated 22 years of marriage but it definitely is a different dimension of full time committing to each other. He's always been part of the business. He's an MBA and um, very smart and behind the scenes, but he's really come full throttle. Um, would I have, you know, would we have added him sooner? I um, mean, right now we're having just, you know, it's always just making sure the organizational structure is in a good place um, in order to grow. Cause I went to school to be a dietitian. I did not go to school. I'm not, I'm not an MBA. Um, I, I do have the gift of vision, which I think is um, is probably what has taken us this far. However, I am not skilled in a lot of the very nerdy details of organization, financial structure, all of those things. And he did, he has helped in that regard since we've opened and we work with a CPA firm and everything. But him being here over the last um, several months has really opened um, my eyes to a lot of things that need to be in place in order to grow financially, like really looking at, you know, a, a lot of numbers and, and thinking something is successful that when it maybe isn't successful, um, when you actually, um, look at things closer, those are things that he brings to the table that, um, we've not fully been able to look at until he joined the practice. So. Uh, I think it's organizational structure and really having somebody that has very good business acumen in that regard, um, financial projecting and those kind of things in order to grow the company. Um, I think as soon as you can get that in place, I think that's um, well served. That is that is a great answer. And I think that's probably one of these things because you're absolutely right. We. You know, we, we kind of learn about being a dietitian. We don't get the other aspects of, mm -hmm. you know, career building or running a business. And, you know, it's like HR, where's HR when you need them? But if you don't have an HR person, you're HR. And then when you yeah, have an HR yeah. person, you're like, but, oh my God, this is, <laughs> you know. So and I'm HR sure is what you do a lot as a business owner. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, so no, that's that's good to hear. So awesome. Mm -hmm. So next question for you. What does the future hold for you? I know you are, I guess, tell us about the counseling venture you've been yeah. to, you know, let us hear it. Yeah, so, so um, I've always loved people. I've always loved, you know, like the, re the relational aspect of what we do as dietitians, not just with other dietitians, you know, building rapport with media people. Um, growing our business. And then in the, in the course of like a, a nutrition one-on-one -on -one session, you know, like I've always known that people don't really want to hear what you have to say until they know that you care and that you can be trusted. And so we've always trained our dietitians at Lamont Nutrition with a lot of that behavioral type of mindset that, you know, when you go into a session, there is very much important 
time that needs to be set aside for building rapport, small talking, those kind of things. So um, about seven, eight years ago, we started getting more into eating disorder, um, nutrition. Um, we, we used to refer it out all the time. But as I have come full circle and nutrition that everybody has a relationship with food, everybody does, um, and it's on a continuum. And when you realize that, that, you know, you are dealing with that, whether you know it or not. And um, that became a lot more evident when I got on the disorder side. And um, it was 2020, the pandemic, you know, and everybody's locked in their houses. And um, I had to figure out what I wanted to do professionally. Um, you know, UT Southwestern was a really good program. Um, but at the time it was just an undergraduate program. Um, it's now a master's program, but when I went there, it was only an undergraduate program. And I, um, at Le Mans Nutrition, we are, we are, uh, intern preceptors for several of the, of the, you know, programs. I didn't need another degree, but I think bigger picture of, you know, saying I, I need to get some type of advanced degree in order to continue moving in the direction that I want to with coaching and helping people. I didn't want to get a master's in clinical nutrition. Um, I, you know, I've always been in, interested in counseling and I've always said, if I do that, that's what I was going to do. And so that's what I did in fall of 2020. I, um, I started my master's um, in clinical mental health counseling. And I am at the tail end of that education. I'm pretty much done with my classes. I just started my counseling practicum. So we have a lot of alliances with a lot of uh, counselors in the Dallas Metroplex and one in particular Flourish Counseling Center um, headed by Natalie Morse um, is the closest partnership we've we've had um, with our eating disorder clients. In fact, they used to sublease out of our, our one of our offices and they grew so big because we were sending so many patients to them and they became insurance providers that um, they moved across the street. And now Natalie is my counseling supervisor. So uh, we have a really tight relationship with them. And um, I started, you know, doing my own counseling for other for clients um, this month for the first time. And it's it's been amazing. That's awesome to hear. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm glad to hear it. Proud of you. That's awesome. Thank you. So, um, so the final question for you, I guess, uh, you know, you you're, uh, you're definitely a uh, a wonderful shining ball of light and you you've done a lot of great things do you have any words of wisdom for the next generation of dietitians out there gosh i have so much um the biggest thing probably would be to really try to do what that just like lights your fire you know like you are going to be successful at what really really gets you excited if you look at anybody that's been uh, successful, I mean, whether it be like St Steve Jobs or, you know, like anybody that's that's been really successful, um, they have done things that really just are, are passionate to them. And that is what has to drive you. Do not make the mistake by looking to the left and looking to the right of you and looking at what is successful and what other people are doing. It is very tempting in this day and age whenever you're in social media, but it's gonna send you down so many rabbit trails if um, you try to mimic what is going on around you. Find what really drives you and um, do it to your best unique ability. And that will be the best road to make you uh, successful. Awesome. Well, with that being said, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate everything you've done for the profession. And I appreciate you. You're just an awesome person. Lovely. Well, Angel, I have to plug you too. I mean, uh, just such a blast. Like when I talk about like the um, Academy spokesperson position, um, you know, people get into it for various reasons, but I can tell you that it's been such a blessing of a sp of a thing in my profession because I, I it opened me up to so many amazing amazing people including you angel i mean the relationships you build um 
you know, when you when you give of your time, like that spokesperson position is zero dollar, it's paid, but sometimes it can get, you know, pretty demanding. But you're get your, you know, I would say like give back to the profession like Angel is, but like in your own unique way. The benefit is you really get to know some people that are have this a very similar kind of passion and drive you have. And honestly, that's been the best thing. I think um, in those nine years is meeting people like you. Awesome. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> all right. I'm also on the platform Buy Me a Coffee. This is a platform that allows creators like myself to create content and get rewarded in a variety of payments. I've decided to do it via coffee. So if you'd like to buy me a coffee, you can do so, and if you want to send one to the uh, individual I'm interviewing, send it to me and I will send it their way. With that being said, thank you very much for being here with us today. I hope you really enjoyed the video and have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.